Hi and welcome to this video for the BTEC Applied Science Level 3 Unit 2. Um, we'll be looking at the other part of the first assignment which is to do colorimetry. So colorimetry relies on the Beer-Lambert law. Basically the more coloured something is, uh, the bigger the concentration. And we can set up what's known as a calibration curve which we'll be doing to figure out the concentration of an unknown solution based upon its colour. So first thing we're going to be doing here again is making up a solution. So we want a 0.2 molar solution and we want 100 cubic centimetres of it. So by now hopefully you're a bit more comfortable with using the calculations. So the first thing I can do with the concentration and the volume is I can work out the number of moles. So based on the Calculation n equals cv. My concentration is 0 0.2, what I'm after, and then times it by 100 over a thousand cm cube converted to dm cube. So doing that, and uh, we can work out the number of moles. As such. But I'm after the mass, so we're going to be getting some of the solid um, copper sulfate here and dissolving it in some water, so I need to know what I have to go and weigh out on the balance. So to do that, um, we know um, the equation moles equals mass over MR, so I can rearrange that, same mass equals moles times MR. So we've got the number of moles, 0 0.02, times by the MR of copper sulfate, which off the top of my head, uh, for mental maths, 159.6, hopefully. And then if we get a calculator, So there's the mass that we need to weigh out. Now again, what you should do is weigh the mass with the boat and then weigh the boat afterwards so that you know what mass you've actually used. So it might be you've used a little bit more, a little bit less, and work out the concentration that you've actually made up. But hopefully you should be able to weigh out pretty close to that, so as you can see, 3.19 grams gets us the concentration up there. I'm going to assume we've done that perfectly and we've made up the 0.2 molar solution. So the next thing we need to do is to design a calibration scale here. So if we look at this scale, we've got one, two, three, four, five boxes in there. So what I want is a nice even step between each of these numbers so that I've got the full range covered between 0 and 0 0.2. So the easiest way to do this is just to say 0 0.2 divided by 5, and that gives us 0 0.04. So what it means is that with the five steps here, if I've got a 0 0.04 difference between them, I'll be able to go from 0 up to 0 0.2. So 0 0.04. 0 0.08, 0 0.12, and 0 0.16, and then obviously the other 0 0.04 takes us up to the 0 0.2 top set. So we've got a nice even step scale within there. Now, making up the solution. So as we can see, we are going to be making 10 milliliters or 10 cubic centimeters for each of these five concentrations here, obviously zero concentration would just be pure water, so no copper sulfate in there. But I want to know how much of the copper sulfate stock that we made up and how much water required to give this concentration here. Now the easiest way of doing this, if you do the concentration that you want divided by the stock so the stock is the original one you've made up. As we can see, there is no water being added to this. 
if we do what we want divided by that stock, you get 0 0.8 in this case. 0 0.8 being 4 fifths or 80%. So because I'm wanting to make 10 cubic centimeters total, if I find out what 80% of 10 is, well, it's eight, and then the remaining bit will be water. So eight plus two gives me the 10 cubic centimeters and being 80% of the stock gives us this concentration in here. And you can repeat that. So if we did 0 0.12 over 0 0.2, it's 60%, 60% of 10, six, remaining bit water, four, and you can probably see the steps that are gonna be taken down for the rest of it. And that gives us 10 cubic centimeters total for each of these concentrations. Now, what you would do is obviously using the colorimeter, uh, make sure you've set it so that the wavelength picks up the color of the solution. So you've been told in this case, with it being blue to use the 680. Um, generally, there's a color wheel associated with the equipment itself, uh, and it'll tell you kind of what filter to use based on the color, just without going into the theory of the color wheel. So I'm gonna make up some absorbances here. I'm just gonna say 1.60, 1 1.35. So just making up some rough numbers there. Um, so as we can see, not perfect. But generally, the reason we want them is so that, as we can see a bit further down on the page here, you are to plot your calibration curve of your absorbance. That's this. These would be your y-axis versus your concentration across here. These will be your x-axis. And what it should look like if you've done it well, you should get a roughly straight line going through them. Obviously through the axes there, we've set the colorimeter zero concentration to give us zero absorbance. If they're a little bit above or below, it doesn't matter too much, just line of best fit and hopefully they're not way off it. If they are, I would recommend repeating the practical. You want a good R squared value for this line of best fit. Now, you've got two unknowns. So we've got an unknown X and an unknown Y. So we'll say the absorbance for X came out at 1.10, and the absorbance for Y, we'll say, came out at 0 0.60. Now, you can see roughly that means the concentration of X is going to be somewhere between these two, and the concentration for Y is going to be somewhere between these two. Now, to find out exactly what they are, what you would do is you would find where 1.1 is on your scale there. You read it across until it hits the line and then straight down and wherever it touches there, that would be your concentration for X. And likewise, you repeat and then the concentration there would be for Y. So make sure to record them in the relevant place there. And that is how you use colorimetry, setting up a calibration curve, which is this. Uh, curve shouldn't mean bent in this case, it is just another word for that straight line of best fit. And then using that calibration curve to read off your unknowns to figure out your concentrations in there. So I've not done a graph uh, properly here, so I can't give you exactly what they would be in this case. But like I said, we know they should be roughly somewhere between these two for Y and these two for X. Thank you.